Okay. Not again. Uh -huh. yeah, okay. Christina and Ava somewhere else. Can they hear what we're saying? They cannot right now, but they're going to come up, I think. Okay. And my sound is working again. I apologize. Sometimes when you put Screencast-O-Matic on before you put this on, it messes things up. Anyway. Hi. We are recording, by the way. I hope that's okay. Um, and do, do you see, like, the, the minus and plus on your keyboard? Yes. Uh, let me see minus and plus. That'll zoom you in and out. We're, well, we're waiting. What? what? Yeah. Yes. What the, um... <laughs> Uh, what are the keys if you don't have arrow keys? No, I, I do have uh, all kinds of arrow keys, but um, so, am I using those where I have a panel with my numbers, you know, the way you do yes. uh, entering numbers and digits, these uh, arrows up and down here? Yes. Okay, so let me see. I want to probably... You could, you, you could also put the map on and by pressing M. And then click inside the map, and you'll fly to where you, you want to come to. Press M on your keyboard. Press the letter M. We're waiting for you, but... Okay. Paul, well, just go ahead and start. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. We're going to get started. Um, she is... Uh, I saying earlier, I just got around ahead. to, like, really digging into the first... And I thought I thought last week we were being meta. Now I understand why we were so meta. Okay, so did you all introduce yourselves to each other? I hope. Um, let's go around and do that. <laughs> um, and we'll start with Marina. Oh, okay. Um, hi, I'm Marina. Um, I'm a third grade teacher in um, Westchester, New York. Thank you. And I'm Chris. I teach high school English and media in Salt Lake City, Utah. And Chris and Marina brought student work three weeks ago and did this process with us. Um, and if you go way, way up, don't do it now, but if way, way at the bottom on the left, there's a link to the, the video of that um, on, um, on Nowcom. Sam. Hey, hey, everyone. Read, a.k.a. Sam. Um, I like to say that I, I teach students to read, write, and make sense of the world through through uh, the humanities focus. And, um, yeah, I'm, I'm glad to be here. Welcome. Hi, I'm Trevor Elio. Um, I am an English teacher in Fairfield, Connecticut, and a doctoral student um, at the University of Illinois through their online program. Welcome. Again, your second time. <laughs> Hi, Paul. Paul Hankins, I teach seniors in Sellersburg, Indiana, across the bridge from Louisville, Kentucky. Good to be here. Kristen. Hi, I'm Kristen Turner. I'm a professor at Drew University in New Jersey and also director of the Drew Writing Project and one of the authors of the article. So you caused all the trouble here. I did. I Good trouble, I hope. <laughs> good trouble. Troy. Hello, everyone. Troy Hicks, a professor of English Education at Central Michigan University, director of the Chippewa River Writing Project. Very cool. Christina. Hi, I'm Christina Cantrell from the National Writing Project, and excited to be here. And introduce your friend. <laughs> or Ewa, go, go ahead, introduce yourself. Oh, um, Eva McGrail um, from Georgia State uh, in Atlanta. And one, uh, I am one of the authors um, of the Interconnected Framework. And I'm so excited to be here. And have I'm so excited you came. So thank you. <laughs> to participate in this conversation. Very cool, cool. I, I didn't miss anybody, did I? No. I think we're good. We're all here, yeah. Okay. Um, I am, if you see the, if you saw the post-its when you first came in, um, one of the things where, by doing this process, over and over every every four every week for the last four weeks we have been sort of refining our protocol of some sort and it, it's not perfect yet but um i put the post-its in the top left up there also we can refer to them so i'm going to try to keep us to time and we're pretty pretty good um we are <laughs> we we need to introduce um 
the uh, the article briefly, very briefly, and then we need to introduce um, Sam's work very briefly. We are then going to go off into small groups, um, do some reading in, in the article. Hi, Harry. Welcome, welcome. In in the article, and um, and then look carefully at one of Sam's posts. Um, um, I I hope it's okay. I sent him a quick email. I'm, we're going to ask him to read that post. It's not a terribly long one, so I think that'll work out okay. Um, this is kind of some of the learning from last week. And then we're going to go back to the uh, small groups, um, talk about his work in, in light of um, the questions from the three domains um, that we've outlined here, or that you've outlined here. Um, and then come back for a large group conversation. Um, and the last word goes to Sam. So th that's the general plan here. Um, it's going to feel a little bit like we're jerking around fast here, but I apologize. We'll, we'll do our best to make it feel smooth. Um, Iwa, or, or yeah, yeah. go ahead. Yeah, feedback on your thoughts about that. Go ahead. Go. I was just going to say, should we do a quick orientation to how the room's set up for people who are new here? Um. Sure. Do you want to do that or? <laughs> sure. I, I think I, I know how the room's set. I just wanted to, if you click on M, you'll see the full map of the room, the letter M as in mother or something. Um, as in map. As in map. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Thank you. Um, Go ahead. And, and um, right now, um, you know, we, we put the three domains. So audience is blue and mode and meaning is green and originality is yellow. And nearby there are the questions of each of those domains. And then in between those domains are the questions that start to over. There's also a set of questions that overlap each domain. Um, and they're also they're they're surrounded by potted plants at this point. So that's kind of the basic design. And then Paul has put a lot of documents around that I haven't oriented to yet. But yeah, yeah. Um, so I'll, I'll just say way, way in the low, low left corner, I mentioned um, we are collecting recordings of these these events and um, and and putting them on now comment. And if you click on that, that'll take you to those recordings if you want to get to them. And on the right side is the the article in now comment the whole article, and then oh somebody went down there. <laughs> it's okay. Chris, you, down. Okay. Yeah. Oh, fine, fine. Back to um, and then and then we we think what's going to happen is that people are going to say, oh, I do this assessment process in my classroom, and I'd like to share this resource. So there's a place to share those resources, and then as we do different ones, you'll see there's a table where Paul Hankins. Um, uh, there are links to his stuff there. So I don't think we can get anything else in this room. <laughs> so that's probably how this is going to end up. Um, we're over time now. It's okay. Though. But could you say, um, the, the two authors, could you say a little bit about um, what your intentions were, what what your hopes were, what, what you were thinking with this um, article? That's hard to do short just as an introduction for us. Kristen or Eva, who wants it? Yeah. Yep, sure. So I believe um, fall 2019 was the last time we were together in person at NCTE. Mm -hmm. And we were talking in the um, elite group, the digital literacies group about what we could do for the field in terms of what does the field need? Where can we push our research? What can we write about? And the concept of assessing multimodal and digital writing was something that we were very concerned with at that point. Um, and so a small group of us kind of broke off from the larger group and started working on how can we actually assess digital and multimodal writing. And that process was iterative and conversational. And we went back and forth between the literature that already existed and our own understandings. We looked at our own student work that ultimately after almost a couple of years of, of back and forth, um, we resulted in the framework that we're sharing as an assessment framework, not as a grading framework, not as a rubric. Um, and we, we approach this assessment as both the author 
and the assessor um, thinking through what goes into a multimodal piece. So in kind of the history of writing where we have expert writers and novice writers, we were kind of trying to think of like, well, what would an expert writer be doing? There's not a lot of research on that yet with multimodal writers. So this is kind of a first step in, in thinking through those things. You were anything you would like to add? Yes. Uh, what I also wanted to add is that uh, early on, I also did a study where I really examined frameworks, existing frameworks, and I found also a lot of gaps and things like that. So this was where also I brought this to our group, uh, Digital Literacies Group at that NCTE meeting. But another thing that's uh, that we really uh, wanted to um, to achieve through developing that assessment that we wanted also to have a tool that we talk about assessment, but I saw someone also made a comment that we want this framework to apply across all stages of the creative process. So it's not that you apply it, oh, here we have a final product, and now we could kind of assess this end product. I think what we want to emphasize is the entirety of the process. The moment you begin to envision something, and that's the time where you begin to have uh, you know, a conversation, uh, um, you know, first with yourself as an author, but then also with other people who can give you feedback, um, where you, as at the time of conceptual, conceptualization, those questions are supposed to help uh, to support you in that creative process and that, that you you flesh out very fully that image uh, that you have for your, for your piece. Also, at the, at the stage where you are doing revisions at the stage of the production. And then you come um, to that last stage, which is kind of, uh, let's look back what has what ha ha I have accomplished, what it looks like, and you have a chance. It's like a loop. You can go back to where you started, what you intended, where you are now, what, you know, how, how you were able to accomplish the goals based on the tools and, and all the reality that, that it's connected because Composing is always uh, situational, so those factors also need to be considered. So we, that's why you also we, we emphasize that word interconnected, but also the, the other key words are the process and that it, it should be really applied across the entire process. And we see, see this framework also looking at this entire process as one unity you know it's it's something that's big and that's that we are trying to kind of help you to think about it also um holistically and in the in that integrative way I, I i i feel like we made you talk really fast i'm sorry um, i'm terribly but, sorry because no. I, that's what i felt with the time limit <laughs> i know um I just just to say um it's been really interesting to approach the article iteratively so that, you know, reading a little bit now, reading a little bit later, looking at some work, trying to apply the categories to the work, and then coming back to the article. That's been a really interesting process um, that I know Marina and I have talked about, um, how we're coming to understand it um, over time. So it's okay that we didn't get it all right now, is what I would say. Um, would you mind moving up to the right a little bit? And everybody, if you could uh, maybe make, yeah, Iwa, if you, I, I want to show what's in the center of this circle. So I know this is something new to you, Iwa. I'm just asking, it's okay, you're fine. You're fine, you're fine. Stay where you are. Here's the well, deal. She, you can move with your arrow keys. I know, she but she... It's they new. haven't been working very well, so... It's new to her. What you can also do, by the way, is you can just see a blue t uh, or a yellow stool and click on it and you'll fly to that stool in the screen. Don't worry about it. You're okay. Everyone's fine. I think we can reach it, Paul. Yeah. We're, everyone's fine. So the first thing I would like people to do is, is and, and I know the introduction is going a little longer. That's okay. Is we want to do two. We, we want both and. Woohoo, you moved. <laughs> We want you. We want you to see like the range of what Sam Reed has been doing um, on Medium recently, especially. Um, so the way you do that is click on his face up there, the Medium. That that will take you to all of his posts. Um, spend just a few minutes looking at that, if you would, right now. Um, then we're going to go to the article. Then we're going to come back and look at one of the posts. Okay, so um, I did. So is everyone doing that? 
just to get familiar a little bit with the work that we're going to look at tonight. Um, it should come up in a new tab for you, and you should still be able to hear my voice, and you can come back to Puma Space by clicking on the tab to come back. I'm also putting the, the link in the chat if that's easier for anybody. Um, I asked Paul Hankins to do a, uh, a quick review of this earlier. Paul, do you want to refer to the five that you picked out? If we were going to look at five, does that put you on the spot too much, or can you do that? Oh, that, oh yeah. Uh, let me get to that email. Okay. Um, yeah, let me just mic off here for a second. Mm -hmm. So again, this is uh, an attempt to have you look at the range of work, um, and. But it would be really, really hard, we think, to assess all of this, right? <laughs> yeah, the range feels important, too. Go ahead, Paul. Okay, I'm back. So I thought that we can uh, look at poems for hustlers. And I think uh, in the parenthetical, I said uh, Sam looks at poetic forms there. Uh, the art of the essay where he looks at exposition and exploration in that piece. Um, the, the vision boards that uh, Sam does with his students uh, brings in that graphica. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if I made up this phrase or if I, uh, info narrative, I was calling it info narrative. Um, and the, the about me where he uh, uses narrative introduction, description and definition modes all together. So, you know, what we see Sam doing is uh, what we encourage our students to do. You can learn the modes uh, but learning how to blend them and synthesize them is like a uh, that that's that that's an advanced feature of composition. So, so poems for hustlers, the art of the essay, vision boards, and about me are the four that I picked out. And I think Christina uh, picked out one that was co-authored. Um, I don't remember what the title. It's a book review, but he writes it as a letter. Yeah. So, he's using so the yeah. the letters to the sons of society. Um, was a book review about a book about letters that he wrote as a letter. So I thought that was cool. And then there was another one that he co-wrote with somebody. And I thought it would be interesting to look at a piece, a co-written piece with this assessment framework. Like, what would that do? So maybe that's a question for another day or something. <laughs> well, we we have it in our, you know. Right. Yeah. So I, I wanted to identify and didn't, and this is going to be the last thing before we go to groups, I hope, um, that we had, we decided a couple of weeks ago so to, to wait on looking at student work and to, and, and when we present our work here, we're presenting, um, as makers ourselves, um, and not necessarily, um, so we're not learning about Sam as a teacher, as, as a pedagogue right now. We're, we're looking at him as a maker on medium, okay? So just to, to clarify that point. And that's what we did with Paul's work as well last week. Um, I, I don't know how, but um, you can, uh, we wanna go to either the yellow, the green, or the audience. Go sit in a cushy chair. Um, Marina, you're gonna, is it okay to take mode and meaning again? And Chris, is it okay to take audience again? Does that work? Yeah. Okay. And don't forget down below is the yellow, um, is the uh, originality down below. So please if choose the same one you did last week or a different one, totally up to you. We want to spend seven minutes, 10 minutes, whatever. We'll try it. We'll figure this out. Um, reading and annotating and talking together about the domain that you're in. Okay, so please fly off and find your partners. Okay, Paul, you'll manage this group and I'm going to get more people to come join you. Okay? Okay. Iwa, can you 
use the down key and yeah perfect perfect keep coming down keep coming down keep going yeah it's good it, it is curious that people don't go down <laughs> okay and if you just sit in the yellow chair perfect okay the three of you can get started i'll see if everyone else is okay great <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Kristen. Hi, Marina. I sorry. I like last week. I was supposed to record, and I had a snag, so I was just setting up the screen recording. Okay, got it. And, well, I did a test run, so I don't think I'll have a problem with. Go it for it. Go time. for it. So uh, I just learned, Marina. I couldn't hear you yeah. when you introduced yourself. Apparently, I was too far away from you, so I've learned oh. how, a little bit about this space, but <laughs> oh. I didn't hear anything. Who was speaking last? Paul said the three <laughs> of you, the three of you were okay, right? Yeah. You're good. And you know, yeah. you, you go to the article by clicking on the poster in the center. Okay. Okay. okay, the four of you are good. You're reading and annotating and catching up. And okay. And we go ahead and make comments. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you're terribly familiar with the article, which Kristen <laughs> writes, you might spend some time like seeing what other people are saying and replying so that, you know, there is a role to play there too. But in that section, in the main meaning section. Software called Now Comment. Mm -hmm. and to actually make an annotation you'd have to join the group so we might not you might not want to join okay another software right now but mm -hmm. one thing that might be interesting to you is to to read people's annotations of your article so yes far. i didn't have a chance to look at that yet <laughs> yeah yeah it's the, the last week of, of our semester grading <laughs> yes yes <laughs> I'll send you an invitation, by the way, to make it easier. Oh, thank you. Just, just, thank you, Paul. Yeah. Sorry, I'm fumbling around. I didn't have a chance to no, play no. early, as I say. I, I barely managed to get myself here today. We're just thrilled you're here. Yeah, so. if, you, if, we can't, if we can't make this work for you, it's not good. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. So I just have a question. So like at this stage, what we what we are doing, we are continuing to um, think about annotating the article. And in particular, um, originality. Yes, with regard to that domain. That's right. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you're also talking to the, the other people in this group about what that means in some way. Mm -hmm. Because you're going to come back with the same people and look at one of Sam's posts. Yes, I see, like we did with our article. Exactly. Yeah. Right. exactly. Mm -hmm. That's where we got to. <laughs> Kristen's made 10 comments. Andrea Z has made uh, two comments. But did Andrea jump in? Good. Mm -hmm. Can I just forecast a little bit? I think letters are going to be a really interesting. They're interesting in terms of audience mode, but also in originality. Like um, the the book he he read, the I forget the name of it. <laughs> um, that is that is a list that is bunches of letters. Mm -hmm. um, and then he's used it in his teaching, and then he, you know, it's become a, um, a thing that he's remixing. Yeah. Well, there is a, there is a 
one, a genre, a genre of epistolary, right? That's yeah. like writing as a letter. Mm-hmm. And these are like blog posts as letters, kind of mm-hmm. blog posts as epistolaries or something. And teaching tool, you're right. I wonder to what degree a blog isn't a purposeful attempt to write a letter to an invented audience. I don't when I when I create when I'm not creating like an artistic piece, but like a a piece of text, um, prose, if you will, or whatever that will be. I imagine that somebody is going to read that on the other side. Uh, yeah. I, I'm ima- I'm imagining that the, I'm I'm talking to somebody um, if that communication is going to be effective and. Sometimes they do and sometimes they don't. Uh, but I think in the terms of the framework, that's not as important as that we have considered that when we write that blog piece, that there must be somebody on the other side. Now, do, do I purposely put a salutation at the beginning of that? How do I greet them? So how might I use um, you know, the original use of modes? So we kind of synthesize the framework a little bit. An original use of the modes to create exordium you know, an introduction to my blog that actually addresses the reader, a narratio that talks about why this is important to discuss. So, you know, Sam is Sam is taking the review of a book and stretching it out into something that looks a little bit more like a feature article, but that feature article becomes kind of like a the, the epistolary, the letter here. So mm-hmm. it's kind of cool. Well, what I, what I hope we get to ask him is, uh, you know, what sources inspired him? We can guess, right? But would be interesting to see. Yeah, yeah. The the second question there on, on the wall above, um, w- you know, what are the sources did he use to gain inspiration? And I think that 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 third question, which is like, w- basically, it's what's new here. Okay, so if you're using sources, you're referring to other people's ideas. That that concept mm-hmm. of transformative um, mm-hmm. transformative aspect of your creation, I think um, this becomes critical in this in this section. Uh, you know, it's just like yes, we we all build on the shoulders of others, but then you know what else? What else do you add? What do you do with those ideas? So I think this this point is critical for that domain. All right, I'm going to go around to the other groups and say we're going to finish up with this part, and then we'll come back to the large group in just a second. ...of other poets in there, and giving credit to those poets, and then and linking out to some of the types of things that you've done, like your poetry cafe. So you were trying... All right. Did you all get a chance to talk to each other? <laughs> no, I think we were reading. Okay. <laughs> so, so um, maybe refer to the questions that are up on the wall above and think about what you want to ask Sam um, after he reads one blog post that he's going to read. Um, and then he, you're going to come back here and he's going to float around and you're going to talk to him about it. Okay? Like... So we're going to think about these questions based on a post that he picks. That's right. And Thank based you. already based on what you've seen. Which is, and mm-hmm. you, you have 30 seconds to get that together. <laughs> we want you to do it kind of quickly. but so, And then come back to the large group. And then you'll come back here with his in mind. Yep. When it comes to audience in like a digital world, it's also the medium through which you're like sending those messages out. Right. Like like the link, the vibe of like a LinkedIn post uh, is a certain audience versus the vibe of a Twitter post versus on Medium itself. And even if, you know, one person has access to all those platforms, they kind of show up in a different way in that space. So I I do kind of like that idea of, um, you know, you're keeping in mind the fact that in this digital format, people are accessing your work from different, you know, online mediums. So like the audience isn't just like thinking about the people but also thinking about how people are showing up in the digital space where they're going to access your work right and having that kind of like blended discourse i think is really cool and it allows people to find interest or find a hook 
regardless of where their entry point is, which I, which I think is, is cool. Right, I'm going to inter interrupt you guys. Um, Sam, can you mm -hmm. be ready to read the IRS piece? Yeah. For us? Okay. Um, and let's all come back to the large group, if you don't mind, um, and to hear Sam. <laughs> Sa Sam is ready to read, and people are flying back to the to the center stage. If you please come on over. Alienate other people. So in this way, you are trying to kind of take out all those extreme maybe views or use another strategy so you you are able to reach out the widest audience possible. But as you are doing that, there is this danger because you want to kind of be so agreeable, um, you know, to such a large group of the people, your, your audience, if this is what's happening, what you are trying to do then, you, you are just trying to kind of be... Uh, less disagreeable, have more common agenda, more common kind of, of, of posts that will be more, um, you know, accepted by a larger group of the people. So in, in a way, you are kind of flattening, you know, the kinds of the audiences <laughs> that, you know, may, that you may oh. have had originally. You are just kind of trying to to appeal to the, to the common denominator. I'm glad you flattening got a things. definition. And, and common things that might interest uh, the larger group of the people. So this, are you aware of it? And are you doing it purposefully? Or is this something that you don't realize that you are uh, that you are doing? Okay, um, I need to invite you back to the large group. Sam is ready to read his post. Um, That's so really wanna... interesting, thank you. Yeah, sorry to interrupt. Um, come on up to the large group, please. You'll be able to continue this. <laughs> Okay, Sam, we are all here. Let's, um, if you want to see it at the same time, and you probably do, uh, click on the dollar bill and you'll go to it. <laughs> it'll, it'll all open right. up, it'll open up a different link. I mean, a different tab. Um, yeah, tell me when to start. I think we're here, right? We, okay. I think we are. Yep, go for it. All right. I, uh, IRS, please read me a letter, book review, whiteness of wealth. How the tax system impoverishes black Americans and how we can fix it. Dear Dorothy A. Brown, a tech, as tax season comes to an end, there's no better time to prepare for any future financial battles with the IRS. If I were to hire a tax auditor or lawyer, I would choose you, Dorothy A. Brown. After reading your book, The Whiteness of Wealth, How the Tax System Impoverishes Black Americans and How We Can Fix It, there's no doubt in my mind that you are who I would need on my side to file a tax complaint against the IRS. I've helped my mother and grandmother do their taxes just like you did your parents, James and Dottie Brown's taxes. Anyone else who reads your book would certainly agree with me that you, Dorothy, are exactly the tax and legal expert someone would need on their side to expose racism in the American tax system, taxation system. Your book, The Whiteness of Wealth, is a powerful and groundbreaking read. Your book displays your strong understanding of how racial in inequity is built right into the core of American society, the financial system. Your book gives a deep dive into the tax code with incisive data. Your commentary on how race is baked into the wealth disparity into wealth disparities in America touches close to home for me and I'm sure many other readers. As a child who grew up in a single parent household headed by my mother Lizzie Reed, who relied heavily on support from my from Ruby and Ab Smith, my grandmother and grandfather, I realized early on that a working or middle class lifestyle was not really a likely path towards creating wealth. As a child, my mind told me that I would be better off being either extremely clueless and poor or filthy rich. Now that I'm older, this book has been an eye-opening read that gives insight into how racism limits so many Black Americans financially. While reading, 
I found it quite interesting to learn as a result of your childhood observation of police brutality and educational inequities, you chose a career in accounting in the taxes to avoid the complications of race. I think growing up black in America makes us look at many, looks at many, I'm mean, sorry, at money and finances in different ways. Getting back to why I chose you, why I would choose you as my auditor or tax lawyer, it's because of your in-depth knowledge and powerful arguments about how racism is embedded in our financial, in American financial system. I do believe that your book offers the right tools to challenge any policymaker who may argue that racism is not encoded in the IRS tax code and that the American social structures in general. Chapters such as Married While Black, Black House, White Market, and The Great Unequalizers provide powerful data, facts, and arguments that would make a great legal defense in the fight against the racism embedded in the tax code. Coupled with the compelling argu argumentative narratives, your book is a powerful look into, into how the tax code needs to be overhauled in order to provide economic justice for, for all. It is a powerful defense against the claim that there's no racism in the American financial system. I appreciate how in the chapter Married While Black, we meet Henry and Charlene Seaborn and learn the origins of the loophole for married people filing joint taxes, joint a joint tax status. You note that up until World War II, only the richest Americans paid taxes. In your book, Mr. Seaborn, the vice president of a shipping company, used his privilege to reach the Supreme Court and get the IRS to reduce taxes for the wealthiest Americans. In this chapter, we readers learn that the progressive tax system is actually extremely regressive for, for any black household, for many black households. The system puts cash in the pockets of most white married couples while it takes money mm -hmm. out of the pockets mm -hmm. of most black married couples. Another thought I had while reading your book is that it does an excellent job exposing some of the darkest parts of the American financial system. In your book, you remind me of Dorothy from The Wiz. You simply ease on down the road and uncover the reality behind the facade. The facade. Your book uncovers the vestiges of redlining and racial discrimination that leaves so many black homeowners holding homes that are depreciating in value far beyond the homes owned by white homeowners. I compare you to Dorothy in The Wiz because in the whiteness of wealth, you pull back the curtains and help readers see that the tax code disfavors, disfavors blacks in the areas of education, labor, and legacy building. As a teacherpreneur and lifelong hustler, I really appreciated the insights on how black taxpayers can take on a defensive stance in the tax game. You emphasize the importance of building stock investment portfolio, uh, building a stock investment portfolio as a hedge against racialized impact of marriage, housing, employment practices, and policies. I believe that anyone seeking to understand why the tax policy matters needs to read your book. I have one last question for you, Dorothy. Do you think your next book will be titled The Blackness of Wealth to show the counter moves black folks make to combat and overcome the unjust economic system that we've inherited? If more people read your book, and take with them the important message and information you're giving, that could barely be a possibility. We can also hope that the IRS commissioner and lawmakers read your powerful book. Something certainly needs to change. We all deserve racial and economic equality, and those two things certainly go hand in hand. Best read, AKA Sammy Reed the third. Oh, we're, we're snapping. Is that right? <laughs> cool, cool. Sam, Sam, th thank you, thank you, thank you for reading that. Um, it really helps us. Um, I, the, the hard thing that um, we're going to ask Sam to do now is um, to float from group to group. And then when he shows up at your group, you'll be able to ask the maker questions. So what we want to do now is have a conversation. We want you to assess, not, not uh, what would you say earlier, Kristen? You said something about, <laughs> it's not judge, but assess this work. Um, keep you, keep your assessment focused on this one 
post that you just heard in light of the questions that are up on the wall in your domain. Okay, I think that's clear. Uh, so fly back to your domain, and Sam, don't start at the blue group. Start, yeah, no, start at the green group. <laughs> yeah, that's mm -hmm. okay. Okay. Anyway, this is a workshop as choreography. <laughs> there you go. <clears throat> okay. How do we assess Sam's work in terms of originality? Paul, if you're talking, you're muted. You're not talking. Okay, but you could unmute. You're good. I have a one question. I, or I, I keep asking you questions. I hope that's okay. Um, when I, I did want to know more about, I guess we talked about this, but I, I always want to know more about from the author about the derivative source or make guesses about the derivative source before I even think about how much this embodies originality. Does that make sense? I find that like I, yeah. I sort of when, when he gets here, we can him. ask him that. Yeah, it's, it's the letters to the son of society, sons of society. Um, the uh, right. That well, book, I'd be curious if that was the first time he did a letter as a book review. Right, but we know that. The, yeah, right. But we know what. That no, that's, no, I mean that that book is a set, is a book of letters, right? Yeah. So I'm guessing. I'm. I, we don't know. I'm. I'm guessing that that. Is certainly a recent source, but we can ask him when he gets here. Yeah. I was also thinking about like Tanahasi Coates, and you know, that's also. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a there's a history of letters, um, Baldwin. You know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So here, uh, an important thing, and I, uh, you know, I don't, uh, I haven't read that book, um, so I don't have a point of reference. But an interesting will be, of course, letters as a genre is a very broad genre. But there might be something unique the way the letters are framed the the way the letters mm. are written in that book and so, so so the the thing that i would be looking for you know how does uh, sam's letter look in comparison to the letter kind the kind as a genre even um you know um that that's on the post okay do i see similar elements uh, you know, the same way introduction is set up. Do I see some twists, uh, uh, both in the structure, but also in kinds of, of, of the content, where the dialogue is happening, you know, talking back to what what's in the book and, and you know, is this just only responding or is it taking it somewhere else, somewhere further? So I will be looking for all the ways uh, um, uh, to see, you know, uh, how the author is altering or moving the conversation in another place or right. whether it's in a dialogue format or some other format. Right. Interesting. I mean, two of the things that I noticed that and you're definitely also combining the mode of first person. So you're combining three different types of writing in one piece, which is interesting. And it, breaks every rule that teachers always say just pick with one which i think is cool but mm -hmm. it's funny because there's conflict it's interesting because the students were like well wait when i'm in class i'm always told just to focus on one thing and not three but what you do is effective so i was just wondering if you were consciously aware of that no but i, I have i have given my students that ability particularly when they're when you know the rules you can break them mm -hmm. and so like if you look in some of our, our youth voice posts, some of the most effective ones are those those ones that are like uh, not following my rules and they're just doing something different and it's, it's super <laughs> compelling. Sam, um, Sam, I know the group down below has some questions for you. Yeah, yeah. yeah I want to push you out of this group. I'm, I'm gonna put yeah, but the Dorothy, Keep... the, I, I did, her name was Dorothy. So, so I'm like, as I was reading the book, and I like. I, I played with that. I, I didn't know if it was going to hit or land or it was going to be corny, but that's fun. All right, I'm gonna go check out the other groups, y'all. Thanks. But, but keep talking as as if Sam were here. 
<laughs> no, I'm sure. I'm sure that might work. <laughs> My head is funny. There we go. All right, I got the ma I got the maker to join you. Yay! Hi, Sam. Hey, hey. Out of depth and turn what is meant to be like kind of a quick medium post into this giant like dissertation because you can embed that hyperlink in there as a way to like bring in prior knowledge that people might not have. Um, and, and maybe, and I think that that could overlap with audience because whether or not you are someone who's very familiar and well versed in these ideas or not, having those hyperlinks, I think could, you know, bring everybody to the same level of knowledge and access to the ideas. Um, you know, even if they weren't familiar with a term like redlining and just happened to be a fan of Sam's work and clicked on it. Do you guys have a question for Sam? Should we come back to you in a minute? Or it doesn't no, matter. Hundred percent necessary. I mean, we got to talk to him in the first round. Yeah. yeah. He's okay. Our, okay. Our so he, yeah, he's he's busy with the other groups. Okay. <laughs> and so, the, just the power of letters just really resonated with us and resonated with me. And I'm like, I'm going to keep using this form because. I think the the power of the letter is that I'm I'm feeling more engaged with the author as opposed to just writing like an academic you know article uh, uh, you know review of their of their text which you know you look around and there are a bunch of those already out there and so um, that that was my that was my task and I, I did send her I, I did I give her a copy of the the blog and I'm I'm hoping that she will read it and maybe get back with you I know she's a super busy person. But uh, yeah, that was that was the intent. Cool. So, oh, I'm oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Oh, so my question is because you mentioned that you you kind of uh, adapted that letter approach. So I would be kind of interested to hear a little bit more. Uh, what what does your letter, your blog, in terms of a letter format genre look like in comparison to that original letter that you use as inspiration? I mean, are there similar things? Did you make some changes? Did you kind of pick up some ideas from there, but then you said, mm, um, I'm going to make something different here? Or, or could you talk a little bit about that compositional process? Yeah. Yeah, and, and Shaka's uh, Letters to Sons and Society, in his book, he uses lots of uh, figurative language. He, 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 he bends the genre of letter writing as well as the genre of um, social commentary. And I, I, wanted to, I wanted to play around with that. And so, hence, like I talked about, I, I weaved in my personal story and her personal stories. And then I also weaved in like the fact that her name was Dorothy and she was like uncovering this tax code. Like it was like the whiz. And I, you know, I made that, I made that connection and I kind of thought it was kind of corny, but I've still played around with it. And so I didn't know if it was going to land or not, but I, I took, I took the risk. <laughs> mm -hmm. So this is what this, what this domain gets at. Yeah. That's really cool. Do you um, get this? Yes, I'm, I, we want to come back and have at least some inter, interconnected time. So please come back to the large group. Oh, and, uh, um, yeah, I was one. Oh. We, we want to come back and have some interconnected time. So please come back to the large group. This okay. is this is workshop as choreography. That's what I feel like speed dating. Sorry. It is. <laughs> yeah, speed dating. <laughs> okay, come on. <laughs> Is really keeping us on point. Extra benefit to his approach. All right, um, we are. We want to have the interconnected conversation now. So please come to the large group. We have you back here without everybody else, real quick. So I, I like the flip. I like the flip on your letter that you know sometimes the letter is assumed to be a direct address to somebody, mm -hmm. and here the flip is that this letter is suggested suggestive of a direct address to the author yeah um, I by having his voice Good there. Point. all right we're coming paul people Sorry. have started <laughs> it's okay the idea of review but also we see like a little bit of auto ethnography in there if you're building in that so that that narrative your narrative doesn't get in the way there you know somebody else who may come in and not understand multimodal com composition or pre not maybe understand isn't the right word but fully appreciate 
would probably say, you know, this this narrative piece in the middle is kind of getting in the way, right? It's me, 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 and myself into the into the composition. And without that me, me, me into the composition, then we lose uh, we lose the voice in that particular piece. It, it was important. There's an important reader to author connection that you made there. So uh, we're, this we're is just something I noticed. Really. We're asking Sam to um, not respond in this round. Um, and please keep your comments somewhat uh, concise um, so we can get around to everybody. Um, but jump in. Thank you for getting this started. For it's just what you're thinking now that you want to say to Sam about the work, maybe from the perspective of the domain. Just anybody, Paul? Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Should I call on people? Is it easier? It might be. Um, go ahead, Kristen. Okay. Well, Eva in our group asked Sam to talk about his source. And it was so interesting, you know, or sort of what are some of the similarities or what was he think, you know, in what ways might it compare to Sons of Society, which was one of the sources that he cited. And then Sam talked about the use of figurative language language and this and what Paul was just talking about the sort of per, his story within you know she shares a lot of her personal story so he shared a lot of his personal story and um and that from sense of society is playing with figurative language and you know this connection to um something like the whiz you know like what did you say? You felt like it was a little silly, but you wanted to play with it, you know, just to say, like, how, how far can you stretch this kind of letter genre? So I just thought that was so interesting. And I really appreciated um, Eva's questions about, you know, about the source and what it, what it drew from Sam in that process. Some key points from the audience, guys. So, um, and I really like that Sam used the phrase. He wanted to see, uh, just kind of piggybacking on what Christina was sharing there. He wanted to see if it would land. That was the phrase that he used in our group. You know, the figurative language, would this land? And I, I love I love that term or that kind of that feel. You know, like sometimes you talk about landing a punch. You know, not just will the figurative language land with somebody by way of meaning, but will it land the blow that uh, we were meaning to uh, affect there? So, right. I, I was hoping to hear from some of the audience. Please. Kristen, Kristen was trying to say something. She oh, might yeah. be too Kristen, far away. Kristen, go ahead. Maybe move down. They're perfect. That's there we good. go. Sorry. Yeah. yeah sorry. Okay. Um, no, I was. I was saying that um, we had kind of talked about similar things with Sam while he was in the mode and meeting, which shows the overlap of the categories. And I was really trying to adhere to the questions to test them, right, and to see how how we could kind of draw more out of not just Sam but us as readers. And so after you left, after Sam left us, um, I asked the question of my fellow readers, like, I wonder whether the choice of mode was in part because of how Sam has been trained to be a writer. So in actuality, he chose an image and he chose a letter, but the bulk of what we read was a letter, which is a pretty traditional mode to write in. And I wondered, you know, as he was reading the first time through when he got to that Dorothy thing, I wanted to like see a tornado because I thought that's where it was going. But then I realized that wasn't actually the image that he was pulling from the Wizard of Oz. So is that a good or bad thing? Like, would it be better to have the image of the curtain so that I knew where he was going? Or is it better to have me kind of snapped with, oh, I'm wrong. My image is wrong, right? Um, and then the other thing that I brought up was he mentioned when we were all together how he, his, he first learned about this book in a podcast. I was like, man, I'd really love to listen to that podcast. And this goes back to the originality and the sourcing of everything. Like you could have made the choice to link the podcast or link to the book or something like that for your reader to kind of go further. Um, but that wasn't there. And I wonder why. Mm -hmm. So these are just kind of like ways that I might push an author to think even more multimodally um, in questions that I would would ask. Not that it's right or wrong, just to kind of think through like, well, why did I make these choices and why not? Yeah. Great, great. Yeah. Um, Chris, Troy, or Trevor, do you guys have anything you want to add about 
audience. You guys see that? There you go. Thanks, Trevor. <laughs> so uh, one of the conversations that we had was, um, Sam, how you sort of built up in your piece towards your point. Um, you didn't kind of like come right out the gate and um, I guess sort of like assert your stance or your position on the topic. It was sort of like a build to that final kind of like endpoint. Um, and I was kind of wondering, you know, being in the classroom and I'm, you know, I'm sure being a humanities teacher, you have to foster potentially spicy conversations around race, class, um, gender, culture, um, and all those sort of things. And um, I, I could see the deft touch while still taking a firm stand on your position with the way that you engage with the audience, the way that you phrased um, your um, language. So we kind of were appreciating the fact that you were getting across a very clear political point, but doing so in a way that wouldn't sort of contribute to the dumpster fire, you know, discourse that we're kind of having, you know, naturally right now. So regardless of one's political affili affiliation, by the end, they might disagree with you, but in the beginning, they're not going to get their hackles raised instantly by, you know, keying into a political language that you're using that might, you know, they might disagree with. I think we also touched on the affordances. If you look at the second bullet point of our um, audience thing, how do writers utilize audience interactivity to achieve their writing goals? And I think that last paragraph, there's clearly the goal is like, IRS or politicians should read this book. And so I think we wondered about the possibility of maybe using the affordances of some hyperlinks to the IRS director or your local politician somehow to, you know, to maybe spur them um, to read the book. Did, I was curious, did you all talk about his students as audience? And the only reason I ask that is because in the conversation about sources, he was also talking about the Black Wall Street work he's doing with his kids in the class, in his classroom, and that they're writing love letters in the classroom. So that they're all working on this genre together. And so I was thinking about how he might be modeling also for students, um, like a way of playing with this form or ways of playing with this form. Which reminds me of Paul Hankins work too, because yeah, it's mentor text as well for his students, but not, not, not primarily <laughs> somehow, right? Only secondarily. It kind of becomes mentor text. Yeah. Um, I, I'm trying to respect time. Um, since I, since you allowed me to push you around <laughs> so much, um, but uh, we want to give Sam last word here, if we can. What are you thinking at this point, Sam? No, this was this was super generous. Paul, you should have told me it felt like this, bro. <laughs> oh you mean man, Paul Hankins, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. Like, cause you went through this last week. I was just talking about how meta it was, but it was beyond meta. Like as receiving the feedback, it was also like it was super generative. Um, other, like, e even as, even as a, like, as a writing workshop process, this could, this could have been like a cool writing workshop, pro like even say before I, I published a piece to have gotten this kind of like, a, you know, feedback would have like, probably like made the piece like even more impactful. Cause you know, we often, uh, you know, with my medium posts, I'm just trying to generate content partly to like keep a cadence of writing as a, both as a as a model for my students but also as as for my own brand and my own identity so um I, I super appreciate all the all the uh feedback that I received it was so generative thank you um any, any um sort of uh I, we're, we're giving you the last word let's stop <laughs> yeah. Oh, on the, Thank, um, yeah, yeah. There, was, there, was, there was a link to uh, Dorothy's book in the, in the um, is it medium, they, the links, they're there, but they're like, they're subtle. So, <laughs> yeah. cool, cool. so we're, we're going to do this again next week. I'm not sure what, uh, what, what we'll use to do that. If anybody wants to volunteer something, let us know. Um, if I, please send me notes thoughts about um, 
the process. So let's keep honing this a little bit. Um, yes, we could make it an hour and a half long, but then we'll never do it, right? So I'm really interested in doing a process that does all these things, but does does them, you know, in a, in a time frame that that we can live with. No, you kept us. You kept us one point, and you did it gently as well. <laughs> okay, great. Thank you all. Um, and uh, you know, then everything remains live. This room remains here. The um, the now comment uh, article remains there. You can go there and comment and keep that dialogue going. And we'll see you all around. Cool. Talk to you later. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Thanks everyone. Thanks Sam. Thanks all Paul. Right, thanks. All right, thanks a lot. Thank you. Thanks, Sam. Thanks, Thank you, everyone. Thanks, right. Evan, Kristen. There's a way to escape Thank down you. at the bottom if you didn't back to the lobby and then you can get out. <laughs> Let's see what the pop out is. Oh, that's what it is. Yeah, pop out. I was just checking that out, too. What does it, but why? <laughs> Thank you, so. Paul and Christina. This is great. And you introduced me. I've been wanting to try Kumo Space and I just haven't had the opportunity. So. Cool. Now I've been like texting everyone. Have you tried this? Have you tried this? <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's kind of fun once you get the hang of it. Yeah. 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 This is awesome. Thanks so much for coming tonight. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Well, thanks for Appreciate hosting. It. I'm going to go to the main room, I guess. <laughs> the, the lobby. lobby. The lobby.